Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king of the tyrant lizards, arguably the most popular dinosaur to ever be discovered. This is the megatheropod that we will learn about today. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, here today with a case study on the one and only T-Rex. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's hit the time machine. Origins and Evolution the Tyrannosaurus rex, commonly known as the T-Rex, was the largest carnivorous dinosaur to walk the planet during the late Cretaceous period. It lived approximately 68 to 66 million years ago. The evolution of this dinosaur can be traced through its family, the Tyrannosauridae, which is part of a larger group of the theropod dinosaurs. The evolution of the T-Rex can be traced back to smaller tyrannosaurs that lived in the late Jurassic period, such as Guanlong and Dilong. These tyrannosaurs were smaller in size compared to the T-Rex, but also had longer arms. During the late Cretaceous period, the tyrannosaurus underwent significant evolutionary changes. The early forms gradually gave rise to larger and more specialized species. Some intermediate forms between the larger T-Rex and its earlier descendants have thought to be Albertosaurus or Displatosaurus. These dinosaurs exhibited features that were transitional between the smaller, more primitive forms and the larger, more advanced T-Rex. Whichever pathway that was undertook, it eventually resulted in the evolution of this apex predator. But what specific features did it evolve? Physical and sensory attributes. The Tyrannosaurus rex was the largest megatheropod to ever walk the planet. It measured an average of 12 meters in length and around 4 meters at the hips. Its average weight would have sat around the 8.8 .8 ton range, but the key word is average. When we take a look at its bone structure, we can instantly tell it was robust, which would be needed to carry around all that weight. But what about the larger estimates? The largest rex being measured at the moment is known as ED Cope. This unit of a rex is estimated to have reached around 13.13 meters in length and measure around 4.4 meters at the hips. So a bit longer and taller than the average rex. Yet the big difference is within its weight. The upper scale of this rex's weight places it at around 12.4 tons. And this isn't the only rex in the running. Another specimen given the name Bertha is being hypothesized at the moment to exceed AD Cope's estimations. But what about its other attributes? Well, you can't list off a T-Rex's attributes without first discussing its main feature, those jaws. Biomechanical studies have supported the fact that it was more than capable of shutting those jaws with an impressive bite force of 8,000 to 57,000 newtons. Now, the massive disparity is due to different studies as well as studying different parts of the jaw. Yet, according to a researcher known as Sakamoto, they suggest that the T-Rex's average bite would be around 48,505 newtons. Also, with such a solid build, you just know that this creature was a powerhouse. According to paleontologist Denver Fowler, it has been hypothesized that the T-Rex's jaws and neck provided it with enough strength to remove a Triceratops' head. Now, if that doesn't scream impressive, I don't know what does. They were also hardy organisms, as specimens such as Stan showed that they were capable of surviving broken bones within the neck. Now, how do we know that Stan survived this? Well, it's supported by two vertebrae being evidently fused together and a third being immobilized due to excessive bone growth. This shows that Stan not only survived, but healed a significant portion of the injury. Now, I won't lie, these predators definitely weren't fast when you compare them maybe to Utah raptors or maybe a current day cheetah. Current biomechanical reconstructions estimate that they could have reached around 20 kilometers an hour, which is still fast enough to catch up to your everyday person. Eric Snively and his team suggest that they were far more agile than any other megatheropod. Their agility may have even been twice as great as any other. It was also likely that these tanks ran their opponents. Infamous paleontologist Jack Horner discovered evidence of pachyostosis in the skull region of Tyrannosaurus. This indicates that bone growth occurs, which increases the bone density of the skull. This would be similar to that of a pachycephalosaurus. And hence, this increased bone density would reinforce their skull and assist in further capability of ramming opponents. Now, these attributes don't just stop at the physical. T-Rex was kitted out sensory-wise. When taking a look at Graham Hughes' 2019 research, the T-Rex had twice the capability for picking up scent as a turkey vulture. Now, these vultures fly hundreds of feet in the air, searching for carcasses. And to be able to exceed them in scent just shows how great these T-Rexes were adapted. And T-Rex also had great eyesight, being superior to that of current-day hawks, 
being able to view over six kilometers away, which is according to Stephen's 2006 article. There have also been numerous studies conducted that suggest that T-Rex was quite intelligent for a dinosaur due to their high neuron density. So this means they could have been anywhere from as smart as a crocodile all the way up to low primate levels. But what type of habitat did they roam in? Distribution and habitat. These megatheropods inhabited diverse ecosystems, ranging from coastal plains and river valleys to inland forests, subtropical regions, as well as semi-arid plains. Fossil evidence suggests that they lived both in lowland and upland environments. The variety of fossilized plants and animals indicates that the landscapes were quite mixed and diverse. But let's be realistic, if you threw them in maybe let's say the Sahara Desert, they surely aren't surviving. But they were fairly solid up until a point. But with all these different environments, what was on their menu? Hunting. In terms of prey, T-Rex hunted some of the most heavily armed herbivores to ever exist. And because of that, they needed to have only the best hunting strategies. Now, to be honest, I'm not going to say that there was one theory that beats the rest. There are a number of different theories surrounding how it may have hunted. Many support the idea of it being an ambush predator, while others say that it would chase faster prey over water sources to catch up to it, while others say it was a long distance runner. So, we have some ideas about how they would have hunted, but what exactly did they hunt? Well, on the menu would have included the Ankylosaurus. Now, I may have called the Rex a tank, but forget about that. Ankylosaurus was a legitimate walking tank. Their size does vary a fair bit, with their weight being around 3 to 6 plus tons. That they made up with this lower weight by being covered in osteoderms, which gave them a natural armory. They also had a club tail, which would shatter any bone that it collided with. An ambush strategy would definitely be required, although I feel like an Ankylosaurus would be the last resort for any hungry Rex. T-Rex also hunted in Montosaurus. Now a lot of people underrate this type of dinosaur because it lacks armor or apparent weaponry. Yet these herbivores rivaled the average Rex in weight and also doubled their speed. For the Rex to be able to catch up to something like this as well as take it down, ambush tactics would have definitely been needed. Then we move on to the infamous Triceratops. I mean, this herbivore is what everyone thinks of when they hear Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, weight estimates for this dino varies, with the largest I've seen putting this three-horned plant eater up to 10 tons in weight. Not only was its weight impressive, but its frill as well as its meter-long horns offered a natural protection to the tribe's vital neck. So going up for a face-to-face -face confrontation with this herbivore would definitely not be the route to go. Although it's highly unlikely, there has been some discussion for the T-Rex hunting sauropods, such as Alamosaurus. I personally doubt this would have occurred as they weighed over 30 tons, and I don't necessarily think T-Rex's stockier build counters the sauropod faction, but I'm just suggesting it here, just in case in the future more evidence comes out to support this. Ultimately though, T-Rex had a number of herbivores to choose from while it was an adult. When it was a juvenile, however, I think it would have hunted smaller ornithopods, as they seem better built for long distance running. But of course, even as an adult Rex, it isn't going to go target the healthy adult herbivores, but rather look for sick, injured, young or old specimens, as these would offer the least amount of struggle. But what about competition? Competitors. T-Rex didn't have many issues when it came to competing carnivores, however, I did find two that would pose issues. The first of which being Dacoraptor. Dacoraptor steini is a genus of dromaeosaurid theropod dinosaurs that lived alongside the T-Rex. It was one of the largest dromaeosaurs known, reaching around 5.5 meters in length and standing around 2 meters in height. I imagine that this theropod would have likely competed with sub-adult rexes, mainly over smaller food sources. If it does come out though that they did hunt in packs, there is a bit more potential due to its larger size that it could have competed with adult T-Rexes and would have more than likely intimidated sub-adult Rexes off their food. Moving on, we of course have the only other competitor that would give T-Rex a run for its money, this being another T-Rex. This is evident as there are numerous specimens with scars that have healed. I mean, what other dinosaur could damage Stan's neck other than another T-Rex? This reflects that T-Rex was super successful with only itself being its main competitor. T-Rex has likely competed over resources, territory, as well as mating rights. Although just when it seems that this theropod was invincible, it became extinct. Extinction. The exact cause of the mass extinction event that led to the demise of the T-Rex as well as numerous other species is an ongoing debate with several theories being proposed. The most widely accepted explanation involves a combination of catastrophic events, the first of which being asteroid impacts. 
The leading hypothesis is that a massive asteroid struck the Earth near the Yucatan Peninsula in present-day Mexico. This impact is believed to have caused widespread environmental devastation, including massive fires, a nuclear winter effect with dust, and debris blocking the sunlight, as well as causing significant climate change. The impact likely led to a sudden drastic disruption of the ecosystem affecting both plants and animals alike. In addition to the asteroid impact, there is evidence to increased volcanic activity during the late Cretaceous. The Deccan traps in present-day India were particularly active, releasing large amounts of lava and gases. This volcanic activity could have contributed to environmental stress and climate changes further impacting ecosystems. The combination of the asteroid impact, volcanic activity, and natural climate change would have resulted in a series of environmental stresses, including wildfires, climate fluctuations, and a reduction in sunlight reaching Earth's surface. These conditions likely had a profound impact on the food chain and hence ecosystems and thus the ecosystem could no longer support the world's largest theropod and have faded to extinction. Now we've reached the end of the case study. I hope you'll enjoy this video on the most famous dinosaur of the bunch. As always, if you did enjoy, then don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time. See ya.